in this session we'll be looking at um, using snot as using snot as well as using KF sensor now when I look at snot snot is an open source intrusion detection system as well as an intrusion prevention system uh, snot has a preset of rules uh, I can have a blacklisted type of rules I can have whitelisted type of rules I can have even rules which have been created by community members since it is open source uh, so snot works basically mostly for linux but we also have a snot executable file for windows so when you install snot on windows it installs by default into your c drive snot folder so when i look at the snot folder in depth my snot folder has different subfolders it has the bin folder which will have the main snot executable it will have the etc folder which has my snot configuration file it will also have a log folder where the logs will be maintained and it has a rules folder where i need to create and specify rules over there. so first thing first is when i'm working with snot i need to configure snot i configure snot by modifying the snot.con file let's say i'll open it notepad plus So when I open the configuration file in notepad, uh, first thing first I need to change what was IP var into where was. This IP var bit. Uh, I'll replace it. Alright. If you see over here, uh, home net, home underscore net is a variable where I specify my home network. Let's say my home network is 192.168.56.0/24. This is my current home network over there. So any network that is other than this can be considered as my external network over there. So what I can do when I'm creating my rules, I can use these variables during my rule creation time. So I told you that external network is any network that is the opposite of home network. So I represent opposition by using the exclamation mark which is complement over here and i specify that i'm saying opposite of home network i mean to say that opposite of the variable or home network we reference variables in snot by giving the dollar operator home let's connect all right if i scroll down this is step one if i scroll down i have different even variables for ports and for servers and stuff if I scroll down, I see a rule part. Uh, the f this type of slash notation is normally used by is used by Linux. So I need to convert it and I need to specify the part to the rules folder. The rules folder is in C drives, not rules. I will just copy this. I will paste this over here. Similarly, SO rule part. It is asking for the SO rule part. I don't have this in Windows, so I will just comment out. I can comment something by using the hash sign. My preprock rules is in C drives, not preprock rule, that is my preprocessor rules. I'll paste it over here. Similarly, my whitelist rules and my blacklist rules should be both pointing to my C is not rules folder. One to make one thing to make sure when you're uh, specifying the folder for whitelist and blacklist, you need to go into a specific folder and create the rules file. So what I'll do is I'll open Notepad and I will save this as a blank file. C drive, snot, rules. Now. I am saving this as a blank file so I need to make sure that my save as type is pointing to all files. I am creating my whitelist that is I am creating my light whitelist and black rules. So it is going to be named as black underscore list and I need to add a dot rules extension for my blacklist rules 
let's see what's created okay my black underscore list, list dot rules is created I will just copy this and replace this I will rename this as white underscore list all right So uh, I've set up my home network variable, I've set up my external network variables. I've even spec specified my whitelist part and my blacklist part. Now I will keep on scrolling below. Till I come to a point of config log directory. Config log directory needs to be uncommented and I will specify the part to my log folder. Let us see drive. It's not log. And I'll save it. My suggestion is before you start modifying this not configuration file, take a backup of the configuration file, save it somewhere so that if you mess up the configuration file, you can always restore it from the previous or from the starting configuration. I'll scroll down step I'm in step three right now. In step three, when I come to step four, it is asking me to part to various libraries, part to the dynamic preprocessor libraries part to the base preprocessor engine and part to the dynamic rule libraries so if I go into snort folder I have a folder called lib this lib folder has two subfolder dynamic in it's not dynamic engine and it's not dynamic preprocess so if you look at the first part is asking me for the dynamic preprocessor directory I will go into snort dynamic preprocessor directory copy the entire part and I will replace this Linux base Linux base location with the windows based alternative i will then see what is next it is asking me for the libsf engine.so now when i look at windows uh, linux equivalent of dlls is the dot so files so for the part of the base preprocessor engine instead of pointing to libsf underscore engine i will need to part put the part to sf underscore engine dot dll it is paste it again over here and sf underscore engine dot dl and I will comment the last part to the dynamic rules library if I scroll down wherever there is a packet normalization that is the preprocessor normalized lines I will comment this preprocessor normalization section of hash 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 and hash I'll keep on scrolling down some more why did I create a file as white and as cool as if you see over here it is taken white and as cool as the rules and taking the black underscore list start rules over here when I come down to step number seven cause step number seven mention my rules now I'm using the basic install of snort I'm not using a community version so by default these rules which are here are not going to be in that folder so what I can do I can either comment this entire out or since or I can just delete this rules make sure you just keep the locals underscore rules file part because whatever rules you'll be manually creating needs to be put up in this local.rules file over here so I will go back to my rules folder I will make a copy of my blacklist rules and I will paste it and I will give it a different name that is local underscore local.rules okay so I'll scroll some down more okay so this is the end of my modification for my snort configuration file now uh, you have to open a command prompt and you need to go into this c drive snort folder when i enter the bin folder and if i do a d dir the dir will show me that snort.exe install uh -huh. one thing to make sure is before you uh, after you before before for snort to run it requires even pcap library to be installed so if you maybe if you install wireshark or 
if you have manually installed the win pcap libraries it's not will then proceed to work further over there uh, first thing first is i need to check what interfaces i can use for snort over there so when i want to check the available interfaces i will use snort comma dash minus w so when it was snort, snort space dash w it tells me that it is detecting one interface it is detecting that the interface is having an index number one it is also telling me what is the physical address what is the ip address uh, all right so if i do an ip config i can see that this machine which i'll be running is not on is having an ip of 192.168.56.101 similarly from the machine which i'll be doing the attacking from it is having an ip of 192.168.56.102 so if I do a snort space dash w, it'll tell me that what is the index value of my interface, that the, it is having index 1, it is having an IP address of 101, and it is detecting what a device name and description for it. So after I have this information, I need to first check whether it's not has been configured properly or not. I can check the configuration by using this not command dash i whatever index value was or the interface that was visible to me if I'm since I'm using I'm only having one LAN interface I'll put that ID over there then I need to specify what is the configuration file folder the configuration file by specifying minus c and the part of the configuration file And it will also specify the part to the log folder. I want to append the output to my console or to my command prompt. And finally, when I want to, since I'm testing, I need to give a dash capital T character. If your snort has been configured properly, it'll show you that a message that has been. This not has been successfully validated and the configuration is proper and it's not is existing. If you did not configure not properly, let's say in the configuration file, if let's say in the configuration file I have done a mistake with my dynamic libraries. Let's say if I by mistake I added a slash at the end over there. Okay, and I run this again. You will see that it is giving me an error. C is not etc. configured 246. Missing incorrect dynamic engine lib specifier. 246 is the line over here. Now over here the error is in the previous line. But it is detecting the error before my dynamic engine loads over. So because I added this extra slash it started giving me an error over here. So let me fix it and run it again. And you can see that this has taken it properly over there. Now let's say I am creating a rule where when someone pings my machine it will be logged. So I will open my local.rules file. So when I'm working with rules my rule format is uh, what action do you want to take. Since I want to alert the user I'm mentioning a lot if I want to log the packet I can use log if I want to pass the packet I can use pass order then I need to specify the protocol ping is a command that is using the ICMP protocol uh, then I need to specify the IP address or the network that the data is coming from uh, let's say that this is my IP address is 101 so I wanted to log any traffic that is coming from 182.168.56.102 The port number can be anything I want the flow to be from left to right If I want a bidirectional logging or bidirectional flow I can use this operator over here Or if I want the flow to come from right to left 
and I can use it this way over here. And I'm specifying that what is my IP address or my machine running this not service. It should be anything. Okay. So what does rule mean? That it will throw me an alert for any ping that is coming from dot one zero two to my snot machine that is having an IP of one zero one, and irrespective of what port the data is being transferred upon. Now I can specify what do I want to raise the alert upon. So I need to have uh, open and close type of bracket over here, a curve bracket. Let's say I want a message to be displayed. That message should be showing that ping detected. Okay. I can specify different sections of my rule or different uh, parameters by placing them after a semicolon. So since I'm creating a rule, I need to give it some sort of serial ID or some sort of ID which I can identify it. If I'm going through a log, if I'm having maybe 20,000 rules, out of 20,000 rules, which rule is this specific rule? So I can give it identifier by giving the SID value. Let's say I'll give it an SID value of maybe 20,002. If I want to detect, if I want this rule to be only alerted or to be raised, depending upon some specific content. I can use a keyword content and I can give the content in the form of hexadecimal strings over here. Let's say in this current rule, I'm just creating it that way it will raise an alert when a ping comes from dot one zero two to my machine and it'll give me a message that ping detected and it'll show me that it is using an SID of twenty thousand two over there. I will save my rules file. I'll go back into snot and to run this snot service I will then get, remove the minus t off. So when I remove the minus t off it will show me that commencing packet processing. Now let's say when I go into my machine over here and I give it a ping command ping 192.168.56.101 If you see over here my machine has ping the snot, uh, snot machine 4 times. And it has raised four times four it has raised an alert four times over here. If I go and decipher the entire alert message, uh, this alert was raised on 19th of December at 5:24 p.m. It is rule number 20,002. It is rule number or SID number 20,002. It is giving a message that ping has been detected, and it is mentioning that this is the ICMP protocol that has been giving the uh, raising the, the ICMP protocol was used and it is messaging what was the computer that this ping came from it came from 102 who was the machine the ping destined for it was destined for 101 over there let's say I will close this right now so when I do a control C it shows me a summary of the entire snot like on which interface it came how many packets were come how many packets were analyzed how many packets were dropped filtered injected and stuff so let's say if i go back to the logs folder when i go back to the log folder it shows me a snot log if i open it with notepad plus plus it is a totally unreadable thing if i want to if i wanted to create a log that is readable readable to me I can specify a format that maybe let it generate in a form of an ASCII type of thing. So if I give a minus K and I give ASCII. If I give it minus K ASCII and I hit enter, it starts not again. So let's say I will remove this log file which I previously generated. And I do a ping again. Now, if you go to see, Snot has now generated a log on the for on the categorization of an IP address. The ping came from dot one zero two. Hence, it created a folder of one of one i two one sixty eight fifty six dot one zero two. 
if I open this file I can see this ICMP echo file is generated and IDS file has been generated if I open this in notepad the same message which was displayed to me in the console the same message is now in a readable format I can see what type it was, it was a type 8 it was using ICMP protocol it had a time to live or 120 milliseconds I can see what was the IP length I can see what was the sequence number I can see a type of packet it was an echo type of packet over there another good thing of snort you can do is now when I've been running snort right now I've been manually giving the command and starting snort up but what happens if you want to generate or if you want to start snort as a service over there so when I want to install snort as a service let's see I will clear up this entire logs again so when I want to install snort as a service in windows if I open my services.msc I can see that there's no snort type of thing over here so when I want to install snort as a service in windows I need to use the snort slash service slash install option let's see does it show me any help information no so I will install snort slash service slash install I will then specify it should be using my event viewer I will specify that it should use an ASCII format of storing the logs I will like point it to my configuration file I will specify the log folder let's see if it installs it alright when I hit enter it will ask me it is attempting to install the snort service the full part is not binary appears to be snort slash service it will mention it has added a registry keys over there so if I go into services again if I refresh I can see that a snort service has been visible by default the snort service is a manual service if I want to change it to automatic I can just right click into properties change the startup type to automatic over there let's say right now I'll just start this not service it's not as started and let's say I will close the command prompt so I'm not manually starting it up from commands it's not service is running and if I go back into my machine if I do a ping again it's pinging right now and you can see that it's not service is running in the background and because we ask a comma it is now creating the respective folder for it so how do I check like it maybe I've done a mistake in this not uh, service creation if I want to view information about this not service uh, okay so if I want to view information on snort service I can give this not keyword I can then mention service and let's say if I want to show information so if I go to see here right now it is telling me that snort service has been installed with these parameters dash e dash k ASCII minus e c colon snort etc snort dot configuration minus l and is not log folder just stop this not service for the time being moving on the next part of this practice is using a thing called the honeypot now when we think of honeypots, honeypots are software that exist on a network that actually creates like a virtual network or a virtual sort of system where it is trying to take away the attention of any sort of attackers by making that virtual network or virtual system look more valuable 
than the main system over there. So if I'm having a honeypot running, if an attacker tries breaking into a network, the first thing first is it'll see my honeypot type of virtual network. To him, it'll look like a real network, it'll look like a real system, it'll look like a val very valuable system over there. And because of which, he will start attacking that, that system over there. Now, the main use of honeypots is that using honeypots, a company or any sort of person that is running the honeypot, he can study the attacker's attacks on it, look at the attacks, use the information about the attacks, find out what vulnerabilities were exploited, and accordingly patch or fix his main system of those respective vulnerabilities or he can better his system said so that maybe down the line if another attacker attacks the honeypot and maybe he breaks through the honeypot and find the other system because of the information he learned before of the previous attack he was able to fix or strengthen the security of his main network over there so for the honey, uh, honeypot practical, we'll be using a program called KF Sensor. KF Sensor is manufactured by a company called as Key Focus. So when I launch KF Sensor, um, I need to set up the thing so I need to set up machine uh, IP ports that are running uh, native services so 21 is using FTP, 25 is using SMTP, 80 is using IS I click next if I want to send email alerts to someone I can specify an email address over here in 2 and an email from and I click on finish if I look at uh, the left hand side the left hand side is showing me a port based view now the moment someone tries to attack my port or someone tries to do a port scanning or something i will start showing it will start showing me up red type of entries over here i can even view it on the base of visitors over here so let's say i'm having tcp and i udp ports where currently these are being monitored and these are green over there let's say i will do a port scan from an attacking machine so on this machine I'm having a software called as Megaping where Megaping will allow me to do different sort of network type of scanning type of options over there so let's say I want to do a port scanner when I'm doing a port scanner I have my target machine at 101 and let's say I want to do it on authorized ports if you see right now there is nothing being that is nothing that is being red flagged over here the moment I start the scan you can see that it is throwing up different sort of alerts so I can see what is the machine visitor name or visitor name is EH victim I can see that some sort of port scan data has been received over here if I keep on scrolling down I can see that on port number four, on port number that a uh, scan was done on port number two using the dead trojan over there the visitor came from 102 and his port 1148 was sending me data to my machines port number two similarly if i keep on scrolling down i can see the same dead trojan was used over here on port number if i see on port number 19 Port number 19, the charge-in was used on this. So if I click on these type of port numbers at the left hand side, I can see that the detrosion was sent to port number 44, 18 and 2. I can see that the echo was done, an echo was sent and I can see that it is showing me a port scan warning over here. Similarly, if I go to discard, if I see discard, or if I go to see other type of ports, I can see more information.